Welcome to ITTV 4 from 4 Physics. We're going to begin from 4 Physics today with the first chapter, which is Understanding Physics. By the end of this first lesson, what we hope you understand is what physics is, which is the study of natural phenomena around us, things like lightning and rainbows. We hope that by the end of the lesson, you also understand what a base unit is and what a derived unit is. Also, hopefully by the end of the lesson, you'll be able to use prefixes to change very large numbers and small numbers into standard form to make calculations and physics numbers more easy to digest. So let's get straight into this lesson. What is physics? Physics is derived from the Greek word phusis, meaning nature or natural things. Physics is defined as a branch of science which studies natural phenomena in terms of basic laws and physical quantities. We use physics to satisfy queries arising from the above events occurring around us. Galileo Galilei the father of modern physics, who emphasized on experimental findings. Now, experimental findings means we have to do an experiment. And when we do this experiment, we have to take measurements accurately. When we do measurements, we need to have a set rule or a set guideline of what type of measurements we want to take. We don't want a situation where different scientists in different parts of the world are using different units. This will make things complicated. Physics and technology. Technology can make our lives more comfortable and faster. An example is the LRT. The LRT is a technological advancement in terms of transport. It allows us to move from one place to another place much more easily and avoid car traffic jams. Physics laws related to the flight of an aeroplane. In the slide you see there is an aeroplane that is flying from Miri to Mulu Caves. This aeroplane itself in its flight contains a lot of physics laws and physics applications. For one, the pilot needs to know the speed of the aeroplane and the speed of the wind so that he or she can calculate whether the plane is moving in the right direction at the right velocity. Also, the weight of the plane and its passengers needs to be calculated so that the plane will have enough lift in order to take off from the ground. Can you tell some laws in physics that are involved in the scene? And when we're talking about the scene, we are once again talking about that aeroplane we just looked at. Other things that we notice about the aeroplane are number one, the strength of the material used to construct the plane needs to be strong but light. The fuel efficiency of the engine. The aerodynamic shape of the aeroplane. Now these are just a few of the things that we need to consider in terms of the physics of construction of an aeroplane. There are also other laws involved such as Bernoulli's principle other laws involved, such as Archimedes' principle. Other laws involved, such as Newton's second law and Newton's third laws. So, when we look at something in this world, there are always physics laws that are applied to it. And this is what the curiosity we have about things is allows us to understand them in a better way by using the physics that we know. Physical quantity, features of an item that can be measured, has two components, the numerical value of the quantity and its unit, consists of a numerical magnitude and the unit. Now, when we talk about physical quantities that we want to measure, please understand these are things that we can see and measure. You cannot measure a mother's love for its child. That is too abstract. There is no unit for it and there is no system of measuring it. 
You could just say that the mother loves its child very much. But when we are talking about physical things such as the height of a mountain, the length of an aeroplane, the amount of thrust an engine produces, for all of these we have a way of measuring a quantity and we have a correct unit to apply or use for that quantity. Measurement. The development of physics requires accurate measurements based on the facts that are usually reliable and accurate. The tallest man and girl in Malaysia in the year 2004. Ho San Fu from Salama Pera who has a height of 6 feet 9 inches. Height is one of the physical quantities. So here what we're looking at is height measurement. We can measure the height of individuals. Here we didn't use the base units, which should have been meters. We just used an older unit, which is feet and inches. But it's just to give you an idea that height is something that we can measure, as opposed to a mother's love, which is not really measurable. Base and derived quantities. We're going to start with base quantities. Length, meter, mass, kilogram. Time, second, electric current, ampere, thermodynamic temperature, Kelvin, amount of substance, mole, luminous intensity, candela. Of the seven that you looked at, number six, which is the amount of substance, mole, we will use that mainly in our chemistry. For your examination purposes, it is the first five base units that you must know. Base and derived units. Length, the unit is meter. The symbol, M. Mass, the unit is kilogram. Symbol, Kg. Time, seconds. Symbol, S. Electric current, unit, ampere. Symbol, capital A. And for temperature, the unit is Kelvin, the symbol K. So these are the standardized base units that we are going to use. What are all of these base units? Let's have a look at each one of them in a bit more detail. Meter. It is the length of the path traveled by light in a vacuum during a time interval of 1 over 299-792. 458 of a second. Kilogram. Mass of a small platinum indium metal cylinder kept at very controlled temperature and humidity. Second, the duration required for 9192631770 vibrations of a cesium-133 atom. Kelvin. 1 over 273.16 fraction of the thermodynamic temperature of the triple point of water. Ampere, the constant current which, if maintained in two straight parallel conductors of infinite length of negligible circular cross-section and placed one meter apart in a vacuum, would produce between these conductors a force equal to 2 times 10 to the power negative 7 Newton per meter of length. So, just for you to understand that each of these base units has got a set reason for its measurement. You don't need to know the reasons for their measurements. It's just so that you understand that these are the standards that have been created for us to use in the meter scale. Derived quantities. Physical quantities can be classified into two types. The base quantities and the derived quantities. Derived units, examples, volume, velocity, density, force, electric charge. Now, a derived unit is produced from the base units. We can normally produce this derived unit based on a physics formula that we are using. Any simple formula will allow us to work out the derived units. I'll give you an example here on the board. If we want to work out the derived unit for volume, 
What we would do is write out the formula for volume. Volume is length times width times height. Now, the base unit for length, which is a distance, is meter. So, meter. Width is also meter. So, we put in here meter. And height is also meter. So, we put in here meter. Meter times meter times meter will give me the derived unit for volume, which is x m cubed like so. This is the derived unit. So understand what a derived unit is. We produce this derived unit from a given formula. Sometimes derived units have got a name given to them based on a famous scientist that produced or did some work on the subject. Let's have a look at another derived unit, which is force. So force equals mass times acceleration. The units for mass is kilogram. And the units for acceleration are meter seconds negative two. This meter seconds negative two is a derived unit that we get from the formula for acceleration, which is velocity over time. But let's just look at this. So force is kilogram ms negative two. If you multiply them, you get kg ms negative two. So this derived unit, kg ms negative two, has a special name for it, which is named Newton, after Sir Isaac Newton. So, we write it as capital N, which is Newton. So, understand that some derived units, such as meter cubed for volume, has no special name to it. It is just meter cubed. Some derived units, such as kg ms negative 2, which is the units for force, it has a special name, Newton. So in general, you will see the symbol capital N being used. We don't write the name with a capital N, we just write it with a small n, as in N-E-W-T-O-N for Newton. So understand the difference between derived units that have special names and just common derived units. SI prefixes. We can make a bigger unit or a smaller by adding a symbol in the front of the unit called a prefix. Some prefixes are shown in the table. Now we've learned these prefixes in our lower secondary. Now we need to use them again. A lot of the time in our physics, we have very big numbers or very small numbers that we are dealing with. And it's very easy to make mistakes in calculations when dealing with these. So prefixes are commonly used so that we make the numbers look much more neater, cleaner and easier to understand. Now if we go back to the slide and have a look at some of these prefixes, example we have tera which is 10 to the power 12 or giga which is 10 to the power 9. We have mega which is 10 to the power 6 or we have kilo which is 10 to the power 3. Going on the other side of the scale, for smaller values, we have milli, which is 10 to the power negative 3, or micro, 10 to the power negative 6, nano, 10 to the power negative 9, and pico, 10 to the power negative 12. You need to know the symbols for each of these things. Example, giga is a capital G, Kilo, a capital K. Micro, we have the symbol for a micro. Pico, we have a small p. Nano, we have a small n.
So what we do is we put this symbol before the unit so that we understand its value. Example, the circumference of the Earth is about one mega meter. So instead of saying the circumference of the Earth is 1.0000000000, which is too many, we just say it's one mega meter, which means it's one times 10 to the power six meters. The diameter of a virus is less than 0 0.1 micrometers. So instead of saying that a virus is 0 0.0000000001, what we say is a simpler way, 1 times 10 to the power negative 6, or 1 micrometer. It makes the number much more easy to understand. Scientific notation, m times 10 to the power n, where m is between 1 and 10, and n is an integer. Many physical quantities are very large or very small numerical values. To work with such numbers, write them in scientific notation by expressing numbers as a power of 10. The numerical part of a quantity is written as a number between 1 and 10 multiplied by a whole number power of 10. Example, velocity of light is 3000000000 ms-1. So let's go up to the board and write it up on the board. What we have here is the number like this. 3000000000 ms-1. Now that is the velocity of light. Now that is a very hard number to keep writing in your book all the time. So what we do is we simplify. We move the decimal point from here forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we put the decimal point here. Now I move the decimal point forward, which is to the left, by eight. So what I do is, now when I rewrite this, I write this as three times 10 to the power 8, like so. So the amount of times I move the decimal point to the left, that represents the power, and the value in the front, well, we want to keep it to one significant figure, that would be the 3. And then we just use the units here again. ms, negative 1. Let's try a question. The distance between the Sun and Mars is 227, 8, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 meter. Can you write the distance in scientific notation? So remember what we're supposed to do. Move the decimal point so that we make it more simple. So we have a value 227, 8, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 meters. So we need to move the decimal point forward. If we move it forward, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 to here. So our final number can be this 2.278 times how many movements did we make? 11. So times 10 to the power 11 meters, like so. So remember, the number of times you move the decimal point to the left, that will be your exponent of 10, or the power of 10 that you're going to use. When you move to the left, it's always a positive value. If you move it to the right, it becomes a negative value. So let's have a look at the answers. 2.278 times 10 to the power 11. Let's try another question. The Gunting Skyway is the longest cable car system in Southeast Asia. Many tourists use these cable cars to travel 3.38 kilometers from Gotong Jaya to the Highlands Hotel. 
The journey takes 11 minutes. It has a maximum speed of 21.6 km per hour and is the fastest mono cable car system in the world. The Skyway can carry a load of maximum 6 people, which has a total weight of 4,000 newtons. Read the passage above and draw a table to divide the physical quantities into two groups. What are the base and derived quantities found in the passage? Secondly, convert the speed 21.6 km per hour to unit meters per second. So let's look at the passage. From the passage, first thing we want to do is find base quantities and derived quantities. Remember your base quantities were mass, length, time, temperature and ampere. So do we have any of those in the statement? Then we want to find derived quantities. These are things like force, velocity, volume, uh, any of these other things, acceleration. Try to try and find base and derived quantities and put them down in a little table. Base quantities, derived quantities. Can you do that? Have you done that? Let's have a look at what the answers should be. So let's have a look at the answers for the first part, base and derived quantities. Remember base quantities are things like length, time, mass. So in the passage we have the length which is 3.38 kilometers and we also have the time given to us. This is 11 minutes. So those are your base quantities. Other values that we found in the passageway were velocity and weight. These come under derived quantities. Velocity, as you can see, is kilometer per hour. There are two units there. And weight, 4,000 newtons. Remember, newton is a derived quantity. The second part, convert the speed 21.6 kilometers per hour. Well, what we need to do here is change it into meters per second. And we can get the answer, 6 meters per second. So, how do you change it to 6 meters per second? If you're not sure, remember, kilo is a thousand meters and hour needs to be changed into seconds, which is 60 times 60, which is 3,600. And if you divide the two by each other, you will get the answer 6 meters per second. So let's have a quick summary of what we've gone through. Physical quantity. Physical quantities are things that we can measure. SI units. SI units are our units that are fixed around the world, such as meters, seconds, ampere, Kelvin. Base and derived quantities and units. Remember our base units. Length, meter, mass, kilogram. Temperature, Kelvin. Time, seconds, and current, ampere. These are our base units. A derived unit is made up of the base units. The examples that we did earlier were volume, which is meter cubed, or force, which was kgms negative 2, which had a special name, Newton. Some derived units have got special names, some don't. Number four, prefix. Remember the prefixes. We are changing values so that we can make them more simplified. Things like mega, giga, micro, pico. All of these make values slightly smaller. Each of these prefixes has a given value. Finally, standard form. Remember how we changed numbers into standard form. The example was up here, where we took this large number and we changed it into standard form. Remember how many decimal points you move, that becomes your exponent of 10 or the power of 10. Try to do this with large or very small numbers because they're much easier to deal with after that. That's all the time we have for this lesson. I hope you have a better understanding of base units, derived units, prefixes and standard form.
Thank you for watching ITTV.